So this is basically how we're going to execute a for loop. And this is a very, very powerful way we can uh, leverage, uh, 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 leverage Jinja. Another aspect for Jinja is, if you look at here, is the if else statements. Again, executable code for uh, if else statements here. Um, then we use the if statement of Python. I don't need to explain that. I think uh, it's very clear how that works. Then we use the else, state, else statement within the uh, Jinja executable, and we execute the paragraph that would appear if that uh, if statement is not correct. And then we again use the uh, round out the block in Jinja by by you know using the end followed by if, which is this uh, uh, control statement that we're leveraging here. So if we go back here and see control, we see a list of four items here, and it's saying, please activate your account, which we go back to the code. It means that this if statement came off as false because uh, this first item within the um, uh, within the array is not Apple. So if you use the zeroth item, and now again, uh, another aspect here is that Flask is not a uh, Flask run is not a dynamically updating developmental server. So you need to close the server out after you make any changes to the code. Then you need to rerun the Flask run so it can pick up all updated changes on the server. So if we run this, you'll see the change here. Welcome back, active user, which means the if statement evaluated to be true. So I mean that's how you can implement different control structures within Jinja, and the important aspect to this is first the dynamically populating list item that like the case study that I discussed for the for loop, and another case for the if else statement. They're very commonly used in um, uh, in Jinja or in Java HTML temp templates whenever we use a template engine because uh, we need to check for certain aspects to display certain things to users uh, users based on if so, a certain requirement has been met or uh, any other factor basically. So you'll usually see that when you're logged in, if a page is, a, if you're allowed to see a page when you're not logged in, you'll see certain things on that page when you're logged out and certain things on that page when you're logged in. And that's because they're using templating language, to, uh, templating engine to make sure that they're able to, uh, you know, basically make sure that only logged in users are able to see certain aspects of that page. Um, now moving on to the next, uh, uh, next I think uh, aspect of uh, Jinja and probably the last one that's important enough for us to discuss uh, because like there are a lot of different features in Jinja just like the control structure uh, uh, control structure discussed above, but you can go to Chat GPT uh, and easily pull the uh, ask Chat GPT for more control structure uh, aspects for Jinja or more Jinja features. But these are the most repeatedly used Jinja features and which are the most powerful features of Jinja that that you know most developers leverage. Now, uh, I think the, the, this is this is a this is a very commonly used like this is the most commonly used aspect of Jinja, which is uh, extension of templates. Now we need to understand that when we build HTML pages, there are very there are many aspects across pages that are repeatable. For example. The, uh, the top of the page, the foot, uh, header of the page, the footer of the page, the navigation bar of the page, and uh, so on and so forth. If we go back to this base.html file that I created, right? If you look at this file, right at the top, we see HTML tags, doc type HTML, header tags, body tags, right? All of this is something that is repeated across the pages in exactly a similar fashion, including the navigation bar here. Now, one of the core principles of programming is a concept called dry. Do not repeat yourself, right? And that applies here as well because uh, it's bad practice to repeat or copy paste your code. Like that's always bad practice. Like there's no exception to that. And if we go uh, quote unquote, right? Uh, repeat this uh, across all of these templating, uh, all of these HTML pages, A, it's going to become a hassle. Right now we have five pages, but let's say we have 200 pages, right? That That's going to become annoying. Just repeating all of this code, typing all of this code out. So at that point, we need to we need to identify a way where, where we can do this without repeating ourselves. And Jinja helps in doing that. So here 
it adds uh, an executable block, which means that we can dynamically switch between titles. So Ginger, like this is uh, a very common syntax. You just use the block syntax to make sure that you dynamically add dynamic elements to the HTML base HTML page. So we created a base. This page is base HTML page. So we have a base foundation for all HTML pages and we add these executable block uh, components within this uh, HTML page so that we can create we can add those aspects or you know uh, add dynamic aspects of those block titles within the individual HTML pages. So if we go below the navigation bar, we have this block content under main. That's where the main content of page will be written and here the default content of every page would be placed and it would override. Uh, it would be overridden by the derived templates, which would be using this using extension feature of the ginger template. If we go to extend.html, where we basically are going to explain this feature. Now, uh, keep in mind you can use extends or you can use include. Like both of them can be alternatively be used within ginger to extend a base HTML. So we're going to extend here using this uh, syntax. The base HTML extends base dot HTML file, which is this one here, and then we use add the block content, which is this is the main content. So if we go back here, we add. Uh, I think this one was. Uh, let me see what was the URL for this one. Extend. So we're going to go right extend here. Open that. We see all of that. Now notice this. This is the only thing we explicitly wrote down for HTML to render on this page, but it's showing the footer. It's showing the navigation bar because we're using this extent component. Uh, I, I, I mean, I can make this a little more clear if we if we remove this right here, like this line right here. Rerun flask. Refresh the page. We just see what we have actually written down on the HTML page, right? Because it's not extending the main template and uh, we haven't written down all of those name main template navigation bar anything on this HTML page. But if we go back here, if we. Bring this back, if we rerun flask. We'll see. That the navigation bar footer, everything there is the main content here and like uh, you know a, a, we don't need to repeat the navigation bar footer bar or all the HTML structure other than the base HTML file where we wrote that. So this is a very powerful and this is probably the most common uh, utility for uh, the template ginger templating engine. Uh, basically these are the main aspects or the main uh, components of ginger that you'll be at most uh, dealing with most of the time. Any additional components, any additional features, you can look them up. There's a raw feature that uh, uh, there's a raw feature. There are other features as a macro feature, all of those, but those are not that much used at the same time. Uh, after you're familiar with the syntax and the these four or five P features, uh, you can just look up those other features on chat GPT. You can look at those features on Jinja's um, documentation and uh, you can easily leverage them. Uh, uh, George, before we wrap up the video, uh, the, uh, do you do you have any closing remarks? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, you know, I think a great explanation, Mohammed. Uh, essentially, you know, as as we broke down in the video, you know, Django just allows you to create dynamic web pages, like embedding um, Python codes into these templates. Um, you know, just keep in mind that, you know, instead of, you know, um, trying to integrate. HTML, et cetera, in, into Flask, into Django, you know, you can actually use these these things called the concept called template tags as um, Muhammad, um, you know, pretty much I went over in the video and uh, and embed these functionalities uh, with within the framework. So it just gives you that level of dexterity um, as we have kind of went over um, and control. And the last thing uh, is that if you like our information, give us a thumbs up, like our video, comment in the comment section uh, in terms of what are the videos you want to see. And um, and I think that's uh, that's it, Mohammed. Great explanation, sir. All right, so we'll um, we'll see uh, as George said, give us a if this video provided any value, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. 
and uh, we'll see you in our next video.